How's it going guys? Joxo here with another video and this is another video going in the playlist for our 50k to 100 day challenge. In this video I'm actually doing a response to one of Nicole's videos. If you haven't seen her channel recently, she has a similar playlist in which she shares her side of this journey uh, where we started a business together and everything that we're learning about working with each other along the way. So be sure to check that out. She created a video on her channel about her experiences being a female co-founder and some of the challenges she's experienced with that so far. And this actually led up to a conversation that we ended up having earlier in our challenge where she basically like opened up and laid out some of the things that she was feeling with uh, everything that was going on so far and some things that she wanted to change and she was really nervous and a little discouraged about how things were going and whether or not she should bring it up she mustered up enough courage and confidence to bring it up to me we ended up having a really uh, productive conversation so she created a video basically explaining her side of the experience and some of the things that she learned and what it was like having that conversation and I just wanted to be able to share my side of the story and my side of the experience because I believe it's valuable, especially as other men entering the industry or other people starting their own businesses or running a startup that we are cognizant and understanding of the difference in our experiences between uh, men and women and everyone in between. So at the same time, I just wanted to be able to share some of my thoughts on what she shared and what she said. So that way you guys can have a little bit of insight as to like what it was like from both sides and Maybe you can draw your own conclusions and learn your own lessons and gain some wisdom and experience from this. So without further ado, I will be featuring some of the clips from her video and you'll see my responses to them. And I may even share a couple of clips from our actual conversation that I recorded to you know further uh, give you guys a little bit more insight into what it was like when it happened. So when we first started this challenge, I realized early on that it was really hard for me to vocalize how I was feeling about things, for me to partake equally in the decision making and to just also advocate for myself in situations where I had a different opinion than Joelle. So I feel like I struggled with like being a very passive communicator, always wanting to be like a yes man and a team player and feeling like if I had an opposing opinion or if I disagreed in any way, that that was me not being a, a team player. So I feel like this is something that a lot of women probably experience, especially in the tech industry, but I'm sure it branches beyond the tech industry into all different areas of life or in their careers, where you often feel like if you're not just moving along with the flow or you know moving in a way that prevents you from making waves, that somehow you are not being a team player. When in my mind, I mean, I feel like it's exactly the opposite. Now, granted, everything I'm gonna say in this video is coming from my limited perspective, you know, being a male, being um, the tech industry, and there's a lot of times where a team will be moving in direction following in its leadership and the leader at the time may not be thinking of all the different possibilities or considering all the different variables to make the best decision and i've seen it a lot of times that you'll have one or two people who will notice things that leadership hasn't and as a result try and like raise flags or you know communicate those things which will end up ultimately steering the team in the best direction for whatever to meet whatever goals they have set right so personally as a man i feel like i should be aware of the differences and the experience and perspective of women in the workplace especially within our industry i already know that inequality and discrimination are already far too common like that's no secret it's common for a lot of women in tech to have a lack in self-confidence from feelings of inferiority or imposter syndrome or something of that nature. And I also recognize that there's a real lack of support in those places because HR doesn't really work for us in the, in the way that we would hope. There is no amount of consultations or in-house meetings you're gonna be able to have to kind of alleviate that without being able to alleviate it within yourself. So for me, I just think it's important as a man to be able to recognize those things and do make sure that I do whatever I can to encourage the empowerment or the feelings of empowerment and the feelings of self-confidence in those who I work with. So that way, if we're ever in a situation like Nicole and I were in in this case, where she felt self-conscious about her ability to contribute equally as a team, trying to match my strengths, which may not have been hers or trying to supplement her weaknesses that I may have been able to help with, I think it's really important that we're able to work together and have a transparent and open line of communication around that. So that way we can resolve it together as a team instead of letting you suffer in silence. So I wanted to meet quickly because I felt yesterday, I feel like I want us to be equally contributing 
to what needs to be done to build Umber to what we want it to be. Absolutely. And I, I have felt like just in this past week, I have felt like uh, um, the pace that you have set is much faster than the pace that I expected. Because for me, I'm someone, I need a list of like, what are our priorities? And, or a, like a solid checklist of things that we want to get done this week or something like that. So that when I check something off, I know exactly what I'm moving on to. And I feel like you're more like, like I have this idea, I'm sprinting through it and then I'm just moving on to whatever is next. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah. I can't work like that. I don't know what to do. Like, it's crazy. I have to work on how I communicate because it has been easy for me, especially like in my professional career and in my adult life. Um, and I think this is more so like related to being a woman in certain spaces. Like it's easy for me to just be like, yes, um, okay. Like team player, like I'm just here. Exactly. Be passive or submissive in like the situations I'm in where here that's not going to work obviously. Cause like this has to be a 50, 50 thing. So what I heard you say was that um, right now you've been battling with this feeling of like, you're, you're feeling like you're not contributing an equal amount to, that I am. Um, and the reason is that the, the reason for that is because the difference in pacing uh, and how we, how we work, right. Which I totally understand. Mm -hmm. And I a hundred percent agree with you that um, it's important for both of us to feel like we're, you know, contributing equally, even if it's so much not equal load, as long as it's equal value, I think that mm -hmm. will kind of, you know, help us feel satisfied with, the, with, you know, the, the team agreement that we have going on. Right. I apologize. So in my process last night of trying to figure out the whole font situation, I got carried away. That's part of my personality. It's part of my ADHD. I hyper fixate on stuff and I just started like drilling. <laughs> so I drilled and naturally I didn't want to like shoot you a bunch of texts at two in the morning saying, Hey, by the way, I did a way, a, B and C. I just give you an update, you know, either today or whenever we met next. So sorry for catching you off guard. I know a lot of changes. The site may look like completely different. I want you to understand that your feelings are hundred percent valid. I a hundred percent agree with you in the fact that I think it's important that we both feel like we're equally yoked in this process. And I also want to point to the the fact that it's okay to have different paces, right? I also really struggled with what I call like self-advocacy. And what I mean by that is me saying, um, hey, the way we are doing things right now does not work for me. Can we switch it up? Um, and always feeling like I am burdening Joelle or the other person uh, by saying that, hey, I need things to be a little bit different or hey, why don't we try something else? Because the way things are going right now are really hard for me. Listen, if you are at a point in any career or any position where you feel like things aren't working for you, speak up and say so, please do. It's important that you have voice and say over your process to whatever degree of autonomy that you may be able to operate within because otherwise you're going to hate your job and you're not going to do it well because you're trying to fit within a process that's not suited to how you work and one of two things is going to happen either a you're not going to produce the results you need to do and as a result you face whatever repercussions like getting fired laid off or or b you just hate it so much that you just end up quitting anyway or if you do stick around, you're not going to be doing you or your company or team a service because you're not operating to your best capacity. It's important to be able to feel confident in being able to voice your opinions and understand that if for whatever reason a company is not going to listen to you or on a smaller scale, your team or your leadership is not going to listen to you and give some sort of consideration to adjusting the workflow to fit a better balance of how you work and, how, and, the, and to meet the goals that they need. At the end of the day, that company is not going to work for you regardless, and you should start looking somewhere else. So I definitely am glad that Nicole felt comfortable enough to bring this up to me because that wasn't going to work long term for her. That was not her process. That was not the way that she worked, and she was trying to match how I do things, which is already very chaotic and not typical. And as a result, you know, it was draining her out. And if she had not brought that up and tried to stick it out, who knows? It could have, you know, it could have ruined our ability to connect. It could have ruined our ability to work together long term. You could have developed resentment. All of these things happen, right? So it's important that you feel comfortable and making sure you speak up. And if you don't, find ways to build that confidence. Practice with a friend, practice with a coworker, whatever you need to do, but just make sure that you are advocating for yourself because unfortunately, nobody else is gonna do it for you.
I'm really happy that you brought it to my attention and that you decide, you know, to reach out just to talk about this because I can totally understand where you're coming from, especially from the perspective as a woman to like being either a forced or just conditioned to take a more passive role, especially in this industry. And I really want to make mm-hmm. sure that you have one, the opportunity and two, the comfort in knowing that I respect your opinion as my equal. And I want you to speak up when it comes to anything, whether it's an idea, whether it's a, you know, an issue or a thought process, like the, in this case, we are co-founders, we're partners, right? So it's really important yeah. to me that we have a very streamlined and open sense of communication because I don't ever want that communication ever be a barrier. I've also found it challenging early on to be very stern in my decision making. And I know that this is also related to those other things that I mentioned in self-advocacy and passive communication uh, because for so long working on teams where it's tons of men just spewing their opinions and making decisions. It was easy for me to just say, yes, I agree with that, good to me, and move on. And I never really was working on being a stronger and more efficient decision maker. I know you probably feel this sometimes because even I suffer from this, where I feel afraid to speak up about making a specific decision or having to be put in a position where I have to defend a decision I've made because I feel like I'm shaky in it. And I feel like one of the things that will help you with being more confident in your decision making is coming up with a process that helps you structure how you make those decisions whether that's you know using data to drive certain decisions which obviously isn't applicable in every sense or you know going through a checklist of like these are the things I want to make sure I consider and having different points of reference that you can use to you know back up whatever decision you made if you have to have a conversation with it especially so in the software industry if you work as a developer and you start you know climbing the ranks becoming a mid or a senior level and you start participating participating in the decisions of what technologies to include versus which ones to not include or which direction you want to go or if you decide to go into the sales or product space and you start having to debate which direction you want to take a product or the company itself there's going to be a lot of those debates and as a result you're going to be put in a position where you have to be able to defend whatever it is that you bring up be it an idea or an opinion and we have to desensitize ourselves to confrontation because that's what at the end of the day what it feels like we have a built-in aversion to conflict because on a primal sense or on a first principle sense, we feel like it's going to lead to our death or some type of danger in some way. But I promise you, all it's going to do at the end is boost your confidence and boost your ability to be able to make those decisions and stand by them or defend them if the need be. So I definitely encourage you to try and practice making those decisions or come up with some type of process to build your own confidence and being able to one, make decisions on your own and two, defend them if you ever have to. And don't be afraid to be wrong because if you're afraid to be wrong, you're never going to take a risk on trying to be right. And as a result, you'll never grow. So don't be afraid to be wrong. Always look at everything as an opportunity to learn. If anything, that willingness to drive forward, even into these uncomfortable circumstances in which you may be put head to head with a teammate or a coworker or a boss or whatever, all it's going to do is boost your confidence and your ability to make those decisions going forward. And you're going to be a lot better for it, both in the workplace and outside of it. So definitely make sure you're investing time in your ability to make decisions and feel confident in them. And, you know, and that goes along along with the decisions to set boundaries and stick into those boundaries. I mean, we could go deep into these to the, the different applications of this, but it's really the root of it is you have to find a way to feel confident in whatever decisions you choose to make and the reasons why you made them and be able to talk about them. All you're going to do is be able to find either better ways to improve your process and thus make better decisions or realize that you make a lot of good decisions and because people agree with them, you'll feel more confident about yourself going forward. Just thinking about it cuz like I know some of it is going to be on me of like making sure that I'm communicating how I feel or like what pace I need to work at, like to get things done. Um, and at first going into this, I knew you were like more fast paced. I knew that you had like more, um, of that like fast paced work ethic. And I thought it meant that I needed to match that. And I'm realizing like, that's not going to be sustainable for me. So I need to figure out how, like you said, like how we can still be contributing equal value, but it being in the way that we work best. Like I said, I, I, this is important to me. Like, And it's really important to me that again, like we really established a strong sense of trust and communication um, and, you know, yeah. uh, that level of transparency. So anytime, just even if it's just a text being like, yo, just uh, f- feel free to say whatever's on your mind. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this look into our experience and learning how to work with each other and exploring our individual feelings and experiences as we progress along this journey. 
And I hope that it provided some insight as to the difference in our experiences and how we are able to take those perspectives and communicate them in a way that allowed us to create a better uh, workflow and process and working with each other kind of going forward. So thank you guys again for watching. Uh, feel free to check out the other videos in the playlist on our journey to 50K in 100 days and everything that we continue to learn along the process. I'll be sharing a lot of clips of these on uh, Instagram and TikTok, but uh, I look forward to seeing you the next one.